I mean, you're based in San Francisco. You you have a front row seat, which either could make you much more bearish or perhaps um, have no choice but to try to be hopeful about the, the area's future. Well, I think we understand that the market's a little more nuanced than the press was trying to paint it, right? I mean, look, it, it, if you own a trophy building, you know, office is sort of the, the poster child for, you know, what's wrong in, in the real estate sector, commercial real sector right now. You know, it faces... The headwinds from the capital market sector, it faces headwinds from the work from home, you know, phenomena. Um, but the, and supply and demand metrics, right? But the capital markets thing applies to multifamily, industrial, retail, you know, so all the values are down. I just think that in the office sector, it's hyper magnified. You Could know, you give us some examples? I mean, and, and our audience is filled with opportunistic people who want to buy companies at one and a half times earnings and maybe would buy buildings if they're really dirt cheap. I mean, what are the, is it a valuation case that you see or do you see signs that people are returning or a little bit of both? Well, I think it's a little bit of both. Look, in San Francisco, what was in it for a commodity building? And, and, and again, not all buildings are created equal. So commodity buildings... I think what was trading for upwards of 850, maybe even more a foot, now is trading for between 150 and 250 a mm. foot, right? Um, but if you own a trophy building, you're pushing rents. Higher. Higher, right? So you've got this barbell effect. And, you know, I think, obviously, if you own a bunch of commodity buildings, you're not loving life mm -hmm. at the moment. What, what happens to those buildings? I mean, who, if, if the, it's like this hot potato. You know, the, they're given back to the banks. The banks don't want them. They're trying to sell. You know, who's going to ultimately hold them? And, and can they convert them to residential, or are they just going to tear them down? I think the conversion to residential for most of the buildings in San Francisco is unrealistic. Um, but I will say there's two bets. There's two bets people are making. One bet is buy it so cheap that you can undercut rents and live forever. Mm -hmm. That's one bet. You know, the other bet is buy it so cheap you can convert the building into office space that people actually want to go to work in. Mm -hmm. We're the proponents of the second bet. So I th basically you want to take existing office buildings, keep them as office. You're not converting them, but you're breaking them state of the art. Exactly. You have to create an environment where people want to go back to work. You're competing with someone's couch, <laughs> right? And, and this is not new. You know, we've seen this happening in our markets for the last 20 years. It, it, it's just gotten to this crescendo where, you know, it's, uh, it's something that people have to deal with. And, and it's not a matter of can you push rents if you convert these buildings. It's a matter of there's a rent that will clear. You know, I believe that, you know, if you're commodity buildings, uh, there's no rent that will clear in San Francisco. And it's, the no, it's no different than mid-block, 3rd Avenue. Of New York. In New York mm -hmm. versus Hudson Yards. Absolutely. Right? So you have to buy the buildings cheap enough in order to be able to afford to do the things you need to do to make it interesting. Are there any other changes you pick up? Vornado, for instance, making a huge investment right around Penn Station here in New York because they think that proximity on the commute is one of the only ways you'll kind of get people back into the office. I don't know if you have any similar kinds of undercurrents where, where you are. Well, I, I, there's no question. If, if you've got access to mass transit, that is, that, there's no question. That is a plus. Um, and, you know, if, if you're proximate to housing, that is a plus. Right? So, again, you can't paint the market with one broad brush. How long is it going to take when you're looking at an office building? And first of all, you're getting it not not for pennies. You're talking about maybe, OK, 50, 60 percent discount, something like that. You have to do the massive investment to get this up to be a state of the art building. I have to imagine that's a big, you know, financial commitment. When do you expect the payoff to be? Is this a three, a five, a 10 year window? And, and what does it depend on from the city's side of things? Well, you're buying buildings at land value. They just happen to be coming with a building. Wow. Right. I mean, that, that's how cheap, you know, these buildings are. So, um, you know, from the standpoint of time frame, you know, I've been doing this a long time. You know, I, I've been doing this since the RTC, the GFC, you know, the dot-com bust, and, and now today. Call it what you want. Whatever you It'll want to point have an acronym today, soon, yeah. <laughs> right? But, you know, all the markets that we're in are pretty tech-heavy. They're all very tech-dominated. And they're high-growth industries. That's the good news. The bad news is you go through these rapid decompressions at, at times like this. But every one of the recoveries in these tech hubs has always happened much quicker than anyone underwrote, you know, at the bottom of the market. You know, how long does it take? I don't know. 
you know, my guess is the world's going to look very different in 24 months from now.